All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Colton Posey Fishing. And today we're going to talk about everything jigs. Um, I'm also going to add a little bonus content into this one about what happened yesterday and stuff when we were fishing. So, guys, stay tuned. This is something you don't want to miss. <laughs> what's up so y'all might hear a little bit of popping and stuff i'm actually in the building that uh, i parked my boat in and stuff we've had some rains and stuff like that we got big oak trees and all that but i'm gonna try to talk as loud and clear as possible so oh we're gonna be talking about everything jigs um, from your football heads to your swim jigs the whole nine yards i'm gonna show you what jigs i use and what i like to use so one of the first ones that i use year round is a football head so a football head pretty obvious uh, it's shaped like a football and this just has a really good action when it hits bottom it falls forwards or backwards so the brand that I use is G money so the reason that I use G money and I've used G money for years number one the skirt is actually rubber not silicone so when this thing hits bottom it flares out and gives it a bigger profile in the water, but it's a smaller bait. So my hookup ratio is a lot better. It is a, uh, this is the G Money Finesse football jig. Uh, so it's got a lighter wire hook, a lighter weed guard and stuff like that. But the biggest key to me is it is actually a vertical line tie. So the line tie is straight up and down. And what that does, that provides me, I can go through rock I can go through wood, I can go through grass, I can go through just about anything with this jig. So your horizontal line ties, they do work really well and stuff around wood and rocks, but your vertical line tie, I can apply this to any situation that I want to. Um, that's your 3 8 ounce. Now, this is your half ounce G Money jig. The only time that I swap is, is I'm fishing like really deep water. So if I want my jig to get down to like 25 you know 25 to 40 foot then i'm switching to a half ounce because obviously i want it to get down to those fish quicker um the three eight ounce i use it pretty much 90 percent of the time so <clears throat> that's the first football head that i use now uh there's another one that i i use it similar to a football head but it has a stand-up action so it's shaped like a football but then it's got the flat top where it can sit straight up now this is a mop jig now, this is made by Buckeye Lures, I think, and it's a really, really big profile jig. And I use this typically on fisheries like Gunnersville or Pickwick or something like that where I'm targeting a really, really big population of largemouth. This thing right here gets big bites. You're not going to catch many fish on it, but when you do catch a fish, it's going to be a big fish. So, let's see here. Another one that I really like to use. This is a ball headed jig. It's just a round head, horizontal line tie, thick weed guard, thick gauge hook, but it's a heavy cover finesse jig. I use this to go through real thick brush. So if I'm fishing treetops and stuff like that, this is the round head that I'm gonna use because it comes through that cover so well. It catches giants also. Uh, all my jigs, man, I'm, I'm telling you, jig fishing you will catch you're not going to catch a whole lot of fish so if you're going out there with a preconceived notion that you're going to whack them i mean you're going to pull them in the boat every time you cast you might as well put a jig down because it's not going to happen most of the time but when you do catch a fish off a jig you can almost guarantee it's going to be a good one so that's the reason i fish them now so your war eagle heavy finesse cover jigs or heavy cover finesse jigs i said that backwards uh, them are really good for going through brush and stuff. Now there's another jig that I use that's a round head. Let me get it out here. It is a uh, old boy Gerald Swindle decide or made these. These are his round head jigs with a vertical line tie. Now these are really good to go through just about anything, but where these really shine is grassy lakes. So I can cover a lot of water and grass with these jigs specifically. Oh, it's got a really, really thick weed guard that's close to the hook, so you're not gonna get hung up as much. It's a really, really good jig. Oh, let's see here, another one. 
that I really like to use. Uh, where you at? There it is. Now, this is a G Money um, a casting jig. So, or the, people might call them an Arky jig or something like that, but this is this is specifically called a casting jig. If you go looking this stuff up, it'll be considered a casting jig. Um, it's got a rounded head, you know, uh, kind of like a U-shaped head. But um, what this is for, what I typically use these for is specifically just for dock fishing. So I skip these up under docks. And I'm going to do a video later on. I'm going to have to get somebody out on the water with me, and I'm going to help teach you all how to skip your lures from start to finish. So, But I typically use these uh, casting jigs or arky jigs, whatever you call them, to skip up under docks. And one of the main things about fishing with jigs, and I, I'm a firm believer of this, if you look... The skirt, I don't know. See that little copper piece right here? That's the thing about G-Money jigs. Every jig they tie is wire tied. So you don't have a little rubber skirt on there. It's going to crack and pop, and then you're going to lose your skirt. And then find somebody to tie you another jig or throw it away and get another one. So these last for forever. Some of these jigs that's in my box I've had since I was like 16, 17 years old. So if that tells you anything. But... That's another jig that I use. Uh, yeah, let's see here. Now, one of the other ones that I use, I don't really use it as much. Now, I, I don't use it much at all. This is like for flipping and stuff like Lake Okeechobee, places like that, deep cover. Um, this is like a one ounce or one and a half ounce uh, pitching jig. And I'll flip this into cover, like into cover and punch it through and all this. Um, I really don't do anything to it. I put a little trailer on it and I'll work it through that grass and stuff. You does not get many bites on it. When you do, they're going to be giants. They're going to be giant giants. So uh, but that's another jig that I have. Right, so now we're going to go over how we rig these jigs up, how we put trailers on them. So one of the first ones that I like to use, a young Christie crawl. So it's just a crawfish, um, you know, imitating the lure, soft plastic. And what I do, I will take my jig, like this right here, see the hook, and I'll take it at the very end of it, push the hook all the way up through here. Now I typically go till about right there, about uh, three quarters of the way through the bend, and then I'll push the hook through, and then bring that trailer just like that. So then you have a crawl trailer on your jig. So pretty much every trailer that you're gonna put on here will be put on just like that. So that's your crawl trailer, your basic crawl trailer. Now, I use the Yum Crawl Chunks also just say let that rain go by but uh i use the yum crawl chunks these are already shortened down and they're beefy they're made just for you know jigs and stuff like that these these work really really well and then during the winter is the only time that i apply this this is a strike king rage tail grub so these don't have a lot of action that is the only time that i will put these on there they work very well. <coughs> Still fighting allergies. <laughs> but uh, your grubs during the winter and your crawls <coughs> further in the year. So just always <coughs> remember that. So them are football head jigs. That's how I rig them up. Now I'm going to bring you all to the uh, swim jigs to cover that. So. Okay, now so covering swim jigs. I only use two types of jigs. I have the Strike King Hack Attack Heavy Cover Swim Jig, and then I also have the G-Money Elite Swim Jig. The G-Money Elite Swim Jig, I typically use it in open water situations. So if I'm fishing and I see those fish out schooling on a point or something like that, that's when I'll switch to the G-Money Elite Jig. Now the other day when I was catching those fish up at Warrior River, I was using the Strike King
I was using the Strike King Hack Attack Heavy Cover Jig, and I was using this, throwing it up around lily pad stems, and then bringing it out, and they were smoking it on the way out. So, I use the Hack Attack whenever I'm fishing through heavy cover, and the G-Money Elite Swim Jig when I'm fishing in more open water. Now, the trailers that I use vary. So, you put these on the same way I showed you how to put it on the football head and the casting jig and stuff like that, but the hack attack jig i'm typically putting a crawl trailer on there uh, just because i'm around that real real heavy cover and stuff like that it comes through it a lot better wait a second let that rain pass over but then the g money elite swim jig typically i'm putting a small rage swimmer strike king rage swimmer which is a swim bait on the back of this and you rig it up the same way you do the crawls you just slide it on that hook three quarters of the way bring the hook through and then slide it all the way up that's it okay guys so now the last part of the jigs that we're going to cover is vibrating jigs so y'all know them as a chatterbait vibrating jig the whole nine yards these are the ones that i use so I don't really have a specific situation that I swap between brands. I just tie one on. If I don't get bit after a little while, I swap to the other brand and see if I get bit. If I don't, I abandon it the rest of the day. So the first one's a Strike King Thunder Cricket. Oh, it just comes through cover really well. Um, wood and chatterbaits doesn't mix. I, I mean, I don't care what chatterbait you use. You're going to get hung up in, in wood. But the Strike King Thunder Cricket is a really good one. I typically put swim bait trailers on mine or flukes uh, during the winter where there's not a whole lot of action. And then the uh, uh, Z-Man Jackhammer. They're very expensive. Uh, I, I, it's a very expensive chatterbait. It's like $16.99 a piece. But they work. I don't know why they work. They just got a different sounding head. Uh, it's just completely different i don't know but it works I, I don't know why it works but the z-man jackhammers and the strike king thunder crickets are really good another one that i use that not many people use at all i've caught a lot of fish off of them that is the booyah melee vibrating jig and this thing it's it's got a different head on it if you look at the head right here it's got a completely different head. It makes a completely different sound. I don't think people throw it a lot, so you might get a few more fish on this. They're not very expensive. They're like five or six bucks a piece. Buy you a couple of them, see how they work in your lake. But in my lakes, I don't think people throw this a lot, and I catch a lot of fish off of it. So, so the very last thing that I want to talk about is the setup. Now, this is very, very important. So, what I really like to use for all my jigs Give it a second. Give it a second. All right, there it is. All right, so I like the Ducket Triad. Now this is a seven foot three, uh, medium heavy Ducket Triad. Uh, it's got the micro guides on it so I can get those real accurate casts. This really comes into play. The micro guides really come into play when um, I'm fishing around boat docks and stuff because I have you know enhanced accuracy to skip my archy jig or casting jig, whatever you call it, up under these docks and stuff. Um, one of the key features on any rod setup that you think that you're going to go with, whether it's a ducket or whatever, is a dial. Um, um, well, not necessarily a tower. Use whatever reel you feel comfortable with, but make sure you're using a high gear ratio. Uh, this is a eight one to one um, dial. I think it's a C, yeah, CG eighty or no, it's a seven seven five to one. I'm sorry. Just make sure you're using a high gear ratio. It doesn't matter. Uh, the higher the better. I prefer eight one to one. I guess I swapped this reel over on this one, but. Um, make sure you've got you a really high gear ratio. The reason for that is whether it's close to the boat, my lure, whether my lure is close to the boat or if it's far off, I can take up a lot of line really quick by just turning my reel handle. Um, if you've ever had that experience where you're throwing a jig and you're on a point, let's say you're fishing during the summer or winter and you're fishing a point and you throw that jig way out there and you get that bite way out there, not only does that seven foot three take up a lot of line, but when you're reeling at the same time with that eight one to one or seven five to one gear ratio, it takes up even more. So you're gonna you're not gonna be slack lining them. That's one thing that you don't want to do. Slack line the fish. So make sure you've got you a good 
high gear ratio casting reel. Make sure you got you a good medium heavy rod. I use the Ducket and Daiwa combo. That's just what I like. Now, my pound line, the I use 15 pound. That's it. 15 pound on my jigs. Period. Swim jigs. Uh, uh, my chatter baits. My uh, football heads. That's it. 15 pound cigar. Um, I typically use a Brazex because it's a really, really, really tough line. But uh, if you don't want to go that expensive, the red label works really well. Um, and Vizex works really well. It's not as abrasion resistance, but um, whichever way you decide to go, I use Seaguar 15 pound test. Um, th that's my whole setup for my jigs. It doesn't matter what jig I'm using, but that's my setup. That's my line poundage reel, the whole nine yards. Guys, we're going to move on. All right, guys, so that's everything about jigs, all the stuff I use. So on my football heads, my swim jigs and stuff like that, I use crawl trailers. Um, on my G-Money Elite swim jigs, I use swim bait trailers and stuff like that. But on my vibrating jigs, I also use swim bait trailers. Now, how I use these baits is going to determine on whether or not I catch a fish. It's all about presentation. That's all it's about. So my football head jigs... Typically, I'm casting them out there, and I'm picking them up off bottom and then letting them sink back. That's typically how I use it. Oh, um, now it varies. Now, if they're very aggressive during the summer, or their metabolisms are high, they're going to want to eat more. Um, I'm actually pulling it fast. I mean, I, I pop in my rod tip, making that jig jump up, and then letting it go back down. During the winter, I'm typically dragging so I'll cast it out there, let it hit bottom, and then I'm pulling to the side and just letting that thing come over whatever I'm fishing. And a lot of times the fish will load up on it like they do on a swim bait or a spinner bait or something like that. My swim jigs. Now my hack attack, I work it different. I kind of work it like I do my football heads. I'll cast it up in that cover, I'll shake it a few times, and then I'll swim it out. Now my elite swim jigs by G-Money, I'm throwing them out there and I'm reeling it like a spinner bait. I'm slow reeling it. Might pop my rod tip while I'm reeling it or something like that, but I typically just throw it out there, reel it back in. Now, your vibrating jigs, that's one of the simpler ones that you can use. Um, it's, you pretty much do the same thing that you do with a swim jig. You just throw it out there, reel it back in. Slower, the better. In my experience, the slower you reel that bait, the better. So they really, they really uh, shine during the pre-spawn period. So, oh, that, that's typically when I'll throw my chatter baits and, or my vibrating jigs and stuff like that. But, um, you know, on them, I, I'm using swim bait style baits most of the time. Um, I will put a, uh, um, a grub on it if the water temperature just drops real fast. So, like, if we're... If the water temperature is up around 60 and then it plummets to like 58 to 57, 56, 55, somewhere around in there, then that's when I'll put that grub trailer or something like that on it, something that doesn't have a whole, whole lot of action or anything like that, you know. But now, when I'm talking about temps and stuff, I'm talking about water temp. Whatever it feels like outside, that does not matter. The fish live in the water. They're not living above the water. They have no idea what the weather is up above the water. They don't know if it's 70 degrees up there. The water temp will determine what type of baits or trailers and stuff like that you're going to use so you know like i've said before i can tell you all these baits and stuff and how i use them but you're going to have to get out there on your lake and test this stuff out and really test it out spend a lot of time out there and figure out how they want it and what they want so i carried a, a friend of mine chase hotch to uh, uh, smith lake yesterday we fished and stuff, and we struggled part of that morning, but we was, or well, I was fishing the way I wanted to catch fish, not the way they wanted to eat, you know. Uh, so it, it just happens, especially if you're not fishing a tournament. You just kind of want to do your own thing. But uh, anyways, we get up there and we fish part of the day, and I, tell you, I said, come on, I'm going to put you on some fish. So we left and then went, uh, you know, several miles and uh, got in this little cove and racked up some good fish and then uh you know went to another little creek caught a few fish they were smaller but uh you know it was it wasn't a good day but it was a decent day you know it, here's 
the little bonus content that I was wanting to talk to you about. We were fishing post frontal conditions and high pressure situations. There were boats everywhere. There have been boats there the whole week everywhere. So of course, what you're doing, you're gonna have to change. And that's where like Chase was in the back of the boat. He was like, man, that's just crazy. He's like, you just adjusted and then started catching fish. And it's like, well, you know, it doesn't happen like that every time. But one of the things I wanna tell y'all is make sure, if you've been going to this lake for the past two weeks and you've been whacking them on a jerk bait and a crank bait and uh, I don't know, a swim bait and jigs and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden they just, it's like, it's like they're not there anymore. Well, a lot of times what happens is not that they're not there anymore. It's they've adjusted to that situation of people fishing. So people, you know, you might have went down that bank and caught them all on a, a football head jig. And then these guys went down through there and caught them on a swim jig. And these other guys went down through there and caught them on a jerk bait. They're going to adjust to that stuff. They're going to get, they're going to feel pressured. They're not going to want to eat that stuff anymore just because they kind of know what's going to happen. Um, so they get real keyed in on their bait and, and the stuff that they're eating. So like the, the spotted bass that we ended up targeting in the evening was feeding on thread fins. Yeah, they were feeding on a little bitty thread fin. So what they've done, they've gotten so adjusted to eating that thread fin, they know every little detail of that thread fin. So you really have to mimic that the best you can. Um, you, you can't just, uh, you know, if thread fin, they kind of got like a bluish silver color to them, or purple kind of, but you're not really going to have a bait that's exact like that so you kind of have to adjust to that situation so a lot of times finesse presentations so that that's what we did yesterday i adjusted to a uh, finesse presentation i put all my rods that i had on the deck up and then pulled out all my spinning rods and you know tied on a small swim bait i tied on a uh, ned rig and i tied on a nico rig and I don't know, probably the first six or seven cast in with the Nico rig, I ended up jacking that two and a half pound spotted bass. So, and then kept going on around through there and caught several more fish and then moved to another creek and caught several more fish. So, you know, uh, you gotta adjust to the situation. Make sure that if you feel like your lake is getting really pressured and you're struggling that day, the easiest thing to do, have your lunch or whatever in your boat. Sit down, put all your rods up, Eat your lunch, take a minute, take a breath, think about what's going on. That's all you gotta do. Just take you a minute and get your lunch out, eat it, think about the situation. And then once you f figure out another game plan to come up with, then find something completely different. You ain't gotta fish the same stuff again. I mean, my opinion, I get bored fishing the same stuff over and over and over again. Uh, I like to go look at other stuff, uh, run around. I mean, you, you never know what you're gonna run into. You can run up on a mega bag doing that. So, uh, you know, just what I'm trying to tell you is just pay attention to what's going on on the water. Let the fish tell you something. Like I was telling him yesterday, if I get a bite, that first bite, that tells me nothing. I just paid attention to everything. But that tells me nothing. It could have been a fluke. So, I just say he come off of a little brush top at the very end and there's some sun shining on it or whatever and it's a 45 degree bank. That tells me nothing. I paid attention to all that, but that tells me nothing with one bite. Second bite, okay, something's going on. So uh, I start putting them little keys together. Okay, it might be the 45 degree bank, it might be the brush top, it might be this. I get a little further down, I hang up another one. That tells me everything I need to know. I'm using the right bait, I'm using the right color, and they're on this 45 degree bank at the end of brush tops with, you know, the sun's hitting it, blah, 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 so on and so forth. That will tell you something. That's when you figure out that pattern. So the 45 degree bank would have been the pattern with the sun shining on it, but the tips of the brush tops where they were sitting, that's a pattern inside of a pattern, so you know exactly where the fish are, and you can, you know, track that throughout that whole system. You can go around the lake doing that with that same lure. Um, so, guys, just pay attention to what's going on on the lake. Pay attention to uh, what the fish tell you. They talk. I promise. They talk. They might not talk loud, but they talk. So, guys, I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you think the content that I'm giving you is worth your time. 
also oh you know don't forget to check me out on facebook and instagram and stuff like that i'll give you all my updates as far as my youtube and stuff like that but i put a lot of uh cool fishing videos and uh pictures and i don't know memes and all that stuff there, there's all kinds of stuff on there i also put polls on my uh, story so y'all can vote on what y'all want or what y'all want me to talk about uh every sunday on the episode so uh guys i appreciate your time uh we'll see you next sunday <music>